Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany, and I actually just got done filming the very first garden tour for you guys. So this video will be posted after that. But what I'm getting ready to do is go out and continue planting. And I'm gonna try and see if I can prop my phone up on my cucumber trellis. And that way you guys can actually see without me worrying about my phone and the tripod blowing over with the wind. So fingers crossed that that works out and you'll be able to see a little bit more of what I'm planting in the garden this year. done planting the green beans and I use the square foot gardening method so I did 50 square foot 10 feet down and 5 feet across which gives me uh, four green bean plants per square foot by the way so that gives me about 200 green bean plants assuming that every seed that I sowed will actually germinate and be a productive plant so I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like and then we're going to cover it up with straw and I'm so sorry for the wind noise try my best to dim that on the editing process. I may have to do a voiceover. But as you can kind of see where my seating square was, in every one of those squares is four seeds. Sometimes five or six if I accidentally dropped a couple and I just left them. So one thing to be conscious of if you're going to do the square foot gardening method, most people do that method in turn you around this way and it won't be so bad. Most people do that method in a raised bed. I don't like raised beds. I've tried them. They're just not my jam for like bulk production. I think they're beautiful and I think they have fun, but I prefer the in ground for the majority of my stuff. But I still want to do square foot gardening because that just gives me more produce with the space that I have allowed. So I have to be extra careful and I'm going to show you why. When you're square foot gardening in a raised bed, you can walk around the raised bed to reach all sides. When you're in ground, you can't do that unless you leave walkways. So that is why I've got, and it's kind of butted up right next to my onions, but I'll be able to walk through to get that last row. But I only went five, um, five squares wide because I'm five foot nine, five foot 10, somewhere in there, and I have really long arms, so I can reach all of that and I'll be able to get that harvest. I'm gonna leave myself, you see my last square here, all the way to my rake of a walkway before I start my next crop before I start my next crop. And by leaving myself that walkway, I'm gonna ensure that I can actually get to the plants and harvest. Because after all, if you can't get to it to harvest, what's the point in planting it? So just be cognizant of that as you're using the square foot gardening method if you're doing it in an in-ground bed. Now let's go ahead and cover this up with straw and move on to the next crop. 
Okay, so the next plant that I'm going to be um, putting in the ground or direct sowing um, is beets. I'm going to be doing two different varieties and beets can be planted at nine plants per square foot. So get quite a bit in a small area and I am planting a white variety for the first time this year and then the traditional red boro beet. So I am probably not going to prop you up and show you the actual planting because I'm enjoying listening to my music on my phone. Um, but I will bring you, after I've gotten it all planted, bring you back and show you what that looks like. But I did want to show you that walkway I was talking about. Okay, so again, this right here is where I just got done with the green beans. And I left my rake there. I did not start, or I'm not going to start my beets until here. So that gives me a good walkway to walk through, not only to get my green beans, but I can turn around and face this way and get some of my beets. And I'm going to put my beets in this area here and I'm probably not going to leave a walkway in the middle I'm just going to fill this entire area um, with beets because beets are a root vegetable and I can just go through and pull them up and that'll give me more so I can walk behind myself basically and it'll free up some walkway space so I'll show you when I get done I got the beets planted and I know I said I was going to fill that entire area with beets, but I thought I'm not going to do that because even without filling that entire area, I still got 450 beets planted. And I thought I'll throw in some carrots. That way I can do succession planting with my beets and not have 700 beets to harvest, and clean, and preserve at one time. Succession planting is so key when you don't have a whole lot of time to harvest. Um, now, if you had a lot of help or a whole lot of time to get your harvest done all in one day, plant it all at the same time. I don't have that. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I have one bed of beets, one bed of carrots, and at the back side of my carrot row, I actually planted nasturtiums because I have heard that the nasturtiums will deter deer from wanting to come in and eat your carrots. So I guess we will see. Okay, so right there is my plot for beets, and there's approximately 450, give or take a few. Um, and then, again, a little bit of a walkway, you can kind of barely see it. And then my carrots. So I am done out here for today, uh, primarily because I ran out of straw to cover anything with. So I am going to pack up, go inside. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon, and I need to head over to Kyle's house to get some stuff planted over there and then pick Miles up from daycare. I had the day off of work and so while he was at daycare I decided to go ahead and get all of this in while I can. Hopefully it rains tomorrow and they get a nice drink. So I may or may not show you over at Kyle's. It kind of just depends on how busy I am but that is the plan for the rest of the day.
So I'm over at Kyle's house, and this right here is comfrey. This is a plant that I dug up from my house on the hill. I planted it last year, um, obviously way before I was engaged and knew I would be moving, and I wanted to keep it. So I dug it up, and I'm going to put it right here at Kyle's house, um, and then that way I will have it for years to come. Okay, now I am out in front of the house, and there's these two beds, one on either side of the porch, and I want to do something with it. It is our hope and dream at some point we can have the porch go all the way across the front and maybe even wrap around. But until then, I want to make these beds look really pretty for the next few years. So this bed in the summertime gets a lot of sun. This one gets pretty much all shade. And I'm kind of a person that likes things to be somewhat symmetrical. So this has been a problem for me. I think I'm just going to have to deal with it not being the same on both sides. I picked up some creeping flocks to go in this garden bed and I may need more. I just got two plants, but um, I didn't know what all Kyle already had planted over here. And it looks like there's some columbine and I'm not really sure what that is. And he's got daffodils maybe. And then there's hostas, I believe is what those are right there. So I'm planning on putting the creeping phlox in this kind of bare section here. And then over on this side where it's mostly shaded, I see there's a couple more hostas. I'm going to put some impatient plants that I started from seed. So we'll see how that looks. I have already changed my mind. I'm not gonna put any columbine in this bed. I'm gonna put them on the back side of the house but I did add creeping phlox, one there and one there. Um, ideally, I'd like to get more, but I'm gonna leave these alone and see what they look like next year and add on to them at that point. And because I know I will want to know the varieties of phlox that I planted next year when I wanna add on, these are the ones I put in. And let me see, I think Let's see. Okay, I put the Scarlet Flame right here next to the steps and the Purple Beauty over there. Now to get these Impatience planted and hopefully they're established enough. They're pretty baby little seedlings, but it's fairly shaded over here and it's pretty protected. So I hope we'll be okay. <laughs> Be careful. So I'm editing the video and I realized I did not do a sign off again, but I wanted to thank you guys for watching. I had so much fun getting out and planting more of my garden today and Miles and I really enjoyed spending some time together playing outside and enjoying the sunshine. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you again for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.